Good. Good morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Today, good morning. How's it going, Joe? Good morning, Revolution. Today is the day after the Fourth of July. How did you spend celebrating it? Um, I stayed home. My wife was uh, on call, but um, she got to stay home for the day too. So we just kind of hung out, um, grilled some grilled some steaks. Uh, steaks. Thanks. Okay. You're a meat eater. Yes. Yeah. As much as I'd like to, like, I'm, I'm profoundly convinced that meat is horrible for the planet and everything, but uh, I cannot pass up a good strip steak. It's, I don't I have any ate, ate a steak in, I don't know, 20 years or something like that. Really? You're a vegetarian? No, I'm not. I'm okay. not. Just the thought of red meat, hamburger, steak. Uh, I just, no, I just can't. Really? Wow. Yeah, I um, I can't. Well, um, we um, I didn't do much yesterday. I was it was the city was deserted yesterday, um, and um, I guess people went to the I guess it was the West Side last night to watch the fireworks okay. play. But normally, um, where I live, you know, you hear fireworks all day and all night, you know, uh, but absent yesterday just people just didn't weren't firing off their um, firecrackers or cherry bombs or whatever they yeah this was a i mean this was an interesting interesting fourth in a lot of ways i think um not least of all because um the sort of political stakes seem so much higher partially pushed by trump with his ridiculous you know Military, military parade, spectacle, yeah. whatever. But also, I mean, we put out a meme uh, that said, you know, uh, time for another American revolution. And that, it feels to me like that would have sounded really, really out there a few years ago mm. to a lot of people. And now it doesn't, I don't think it sounds anywhere near, I think it sounds much more realistic and much more necessary and in a certain sense much more mainstream like the question of of the right of the people to um abolish and replace a government that and a society that no longer meets their needs well, bernie it, sanders called for a political revolution four years ago and i guess they're still you know calling for that so that kind of uh, I put it in the mainstream. Uh, so how do you, I've, you know, I've always had a question about that, actually. You know, we, we talk about revolution, political revolution, social revolution. Um, are those things different from one another or are they really just words for the same thing? If I were taking a test, you know, mm -hmm. I, I would, uh, and there was multiple choice and one of them was all of the above, I would <laughs> check all of the above. <laughs> Because in the first place, you need a political revolution in order to have a social yeah. revolution. Because the main question of every revolution is state power. What class, mm -hmm. you know, holds state power? And will for one in which the working class and poor, the people, yep. uh, hold state power and um, and not big big capital, which is what we have now, you know. Uh, yeah. But that's a precondition. Mm -hmm. for a, social revolution in which um, the, the working class transforms society in its own with its as, as you said before with its own morality with its own um, uh, form of democracy with its own expectations and uh, first and foremost uh, seizes hold of the uh, big industry and uh, makes it our own you know mm -hmm. Um, makes private property public property. Um, and then by virtue of uh, planning and, and uh, careful decision, decision making both at the local the state and federal level, you know, uh, determine what's produced, how much it costs, how it's distributed, and so on and so forth, you know. Uh, and so that is what socialism is all mm -hmm. about. Yeah, and, and figuring out those structures of, of democratic control of what we call the means of production, democratic control of both um, economic uh, resources and, and the political power to, you know, to use them as we need them. 
But you know, some people say we shouldn't celebrate the fourth because it's an imperialist holiday. There's a lot of jingoism and, and uh, false patriotism and uh, the flag is associated with US imperialism and, and all of that. And then there was the historic uh, piece written by uh, Frederick Douglass, you know, back during the post fifty-two, yeah. You know, what is it to me, a slave to celebrate the fourth yeah. of July? And, and he has a, a, a point there. Um, but uh, on the other hand, this was the uh, revolution that uh, 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 freed the uh, rising bourgeoisie from the chains of feudalism. And, uh, and that was an important, you know, historically. Quote. Well, there, there are three sort of interrelated, I think, things that we have to uh, commemorate or keep in mind on the fourth. One is, you know, the, um, the big stride forward that, it, that the American Revolution did represent in terms of a reaction against the feudal aristocracy, um, uh, the impulse that it um, provided to, to other revolutions like the, the French Revolution and especially the, uh, the Haitian Revolution, which went farther than either of the previous ones in the direction of, of equality and democracy. Um, sure. we, but we also have to think about its shortcomings, the, the failures, the broken promises, uh, the fact that it, you know, it reproduced some of the worst parts of the old system. Um, they were allowed to, to fester um, and the, the struggle against them went on for, is still going on. Um, and so that's the second thing. The third thing is, is looking forward to, to the next revolution, the, the, the culmination of the struggle for democracy in, in socialism. But that revolution is ongoing, you know, it just didn't stop in 1776. Yes. It continued the, through the Civil War with the victory of the slaveocracy over the slaveocracy. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the eventual sort of uh, victorious counter-revolution against Reconstruction, which was an ugly chapter of the... Right, right. And then, of course, the democratic movement continued to develop and the women's movement uh, won suffrage, which was a benefit for women and all you know, people. Mm -hmm. uh, but Black folks and other people of color still couldn't vote, you know, and so you had the Civil Rights Revolution. Um, and, and so that struggle for, you know, economic and political democracy is ongoing. And that's what we celebrate. That and, and, that's, and that's something that Engels points out, in fact, um, that capitalism sort of gave the, the, the impetus for um, the development of a form of democracy. But ultimately, it can't... Um, it can't stand up against that democracy. It, it, like everything else in capitalism, it, ca it, it carries this capitalist democracy, carries the seeds of the thing that will replace it. Um, uh, capitalism is incompatible with all of the promises that it makes with equality, with real democracy. With, so we're, we're fighting just to, in a certain sense, to fulfill those promises. Absolutely, and that's why we begin every program um, with Good Morning Revolution. And there's a lot to celebrate, including our 31st convention, which was just held in Chicago. Did you have a good time? It was wonderful. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever had that much fun at a party event before. Um, just, in, it was inspiring. It was, um, there was like robust discussion. It was, it was great, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It, a total success. And we elected a uh, uh, new leadership. Uh, we had a debate on our new program. Yep. It hasn't quite been adopted yet. You know, we weren't quite satisfied with it. And so we need to continue to edit it and fine, fine tune it. Um, and there was a lot of discussion about, you know, the main issues that will carry us forward in the next period, the first and foremost being the fight against the extreme right and the uh, fascist danger mm -hmm. um, surrounding the uh, Trump administration. Some people like to call it authoritarian, but I don't really think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pushing toward fascism. You know? um, um, 
we're not there yet, but if we don't reverse it, it could very well end up. And it's, it's looking worse and worse. I mean, the past, over the past few days, um, what we've seen of, of the, you know, the conduct of, of the uh, border patrol agents, the conditions in the, the, the fact of and the conditions in concentration camps. Um, did you see uh, Trump's call for um, uh, intervention against uh, homelessness? Actually, a, a war on the, another uh, front of the war on the poor? No, I didn't see that. What, what so he, he, I guess it was an interview with uh, one of his toadies, Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity, um, in which he said, you know, we've got this huge problem with homelessness. We may have to intervene. And normally when somebody evokes a problem with homelessness, they go toward, oh yeah, we have people who are, you know, uh, suffering people who are living on the streets. We need to help them. He went the complete opposite direction. It was, oh yeah, it's, our cities are unlivable. Cops are getting sick from all the filth. We need to, you know, get in there and clean it up. It's, so it was, it was, it was just, you know, it was a declaration of war on the homeless. Um, He's following in Giuliani's uh, footsteps, who, when he was the mayor of New York, you know, mm -hmm. premised uh, the uh, uh, fight to clean up, uh, you know, the streets of New York um, uh, with uh, a attack on the homeless and, and that kind of thing. So you're hearing that. that uh, the real estate uh, sector, the capitalist class, is very, very closely tied to the push toward fascism. No doubt, no doubt. Um, so uh, what do you think is uh, next for the party and uh, its uh, policies going forward? Have you, what's next for the website? I know you've been given. given uh, well, what we're hoping to do is um, really make the, you know, build the website as a tool of, of theoretical and ideological work. Um, sort of uh, bring forward the, the contributions um, our party and its members are making to um, the, the understanding of Marxism, of revolution, of, of political struggle. Um, we'd like to uh, open it as well as a forum for discussion, bring in more, uh, more voices um, and make it a place where our members can engage, but also the you know, the world outside of our party. Um, we, you know, we're, we're trying to help the working class and that's what, that's what's on the menu for me. So you're gonna have a new editorial collective? Um, yeah, hopefully a, um, a broader editorial collective um, uh, with, you know, um, some folks with both political and technical uh, skills. Um, you know, we've got, we've got some, some really great up and coming people. Uh, clustered around the, the Spectre podcast uh, and, and other uh, sections. So I think, you know, I'm still kind of riding the wave of the convention. And, uh, <clears throat> and talking about the Spectre for a moment, there are two new um, editions yep. that have been um, put forward. Uh, one dealing with uh, some of the uh, theoretical issues with respect to the outlook of the party or like owning your bicycle or something I saw. Yeah, yeah. so uh, basically, you know, it's an attempt to bring some clarity and, and combat some of the myths around communism, right? Um, so, you know, oh, communism means uh, like if you have your, you have to share your toothbrush and the government's gonna move other people into your house and- Who wants to share their toothbrush? <laughs> I, I don't wanna share anybody's toothbrush. Um, uh, so, you know, we, we take on, or not we, they uh, take on that, that kind of, that myth and, and make the distinction between private property, which is property used to, um, for economic production, and then uh, personal property, which is the property you enjoy as, a, as an individual, like, you know, my, my phone or whatever. Um, yeah, the Spectre is a podcast that is put out um, and directed and produced by young communists yep. and um, both in the party and some are, are in the local chapters of the Young Communist League. And one of the things that the convention discussed was the 
uh, and adopted a decision to lay uh, the basis for a project to refound our youth organization. Uh, and uh, so, um, and the specter is kind of a uh, step towards that yeah. because it's a kind of an independent uh, organizationally uh, voice of, you know, young people who determine its content and uh, to direct its uh, production. Um, there are really three interrelated things on that, on that youth question. There's the, like, the work of the party um, among youth. There's the, the, um, the youth organization of the party. And there's also the, the question of the leadership of the party and bringing, you know, people from, from the younger generation into, into that. And, and this is a, a step toward uh, doing all those and building all of those things. Well, one of the propositions that the party has held for, you know, decades now is that the youth question is a special question. Um, and well, could you clarify what that means, a, a special question? Well, you know, Marxism's uh, primary focus is looking at class as a means of uh, analysis and as an instrument of organizing. But we also recognize that there are issues other than class that affect uh, how people uh, come up, uh, how their ideas are formed, uh, how the living circumstances are shaped and, and so on. And so when we say special, we mean that there are class and non-class issues mm -hmm. facing different categories of the population. And so with respect to young people, when there, there, there is a class issue but at the same time, young people face unique circumstances just because they are young, you know? For example, there um, on several periods in our history with regard to economics, there has been a youth sub-minimum wage where mm -hmm. young people are paid less than, you know? Or take the issue of the student debt, you know? Mm -hmm. Young people who are, who are going to college and community colleges face now a huge, you know, debt. But both of those are also, in a certain sense, class questions, right? Because those, those apply to working class youth, not to, you know, um, what's that called? Rich kids of Instagram or whatever, not these. That's, that's correct. But um, so those are some of the class issues, but they're also you know, the voting age would be a, a cross-class issue. Voting, voting, drinking is a yeah. cross-class issue. Yeah. Drug use is a, you know, uh, conscription, class. military conscription. The the approach of uh, yeah, in cases where there's the draft, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have a we can, we kind of have a poverty draft, which would be another example of I'm a class push. Yeah, of a uh, uh, but. Uh, you know, uh, so the drinking age, uh, drugs, you know, um, drug use, is it, you know, all of those are uh, um, housing, you know, um, you know, health education, pedagogy, the way in which um, education is structured is very much a, a youth question. And, you know, the, and, and the capitalist class recognizes that. And so therefore they develop special advertising you know, approaches to young sections of the population, children even, yeah. and so on. Um, you know, you go to McDonald's and you see those special areas that are reserved for, you know, <laughs> children and yeah. so on and uh, so forth. And so that's what we, and that applies to um, politics as well. And so we have argued that because the youth question is a unique question that there are unique forms of organization that young people need in order to um, develop their own thing, you know, yeah. so that they can uh, determine um, what its priorities are, how it operates and so on and so forth. Because growing up and becoming an adult is also probably the most important non-class aspect of yeah. the issues facing and and that is um, a process of taking responsibility seizing hold of one's life and so on that period of transition uh, and that's really important because in order to do that it's kind of a rebellious thing that takes mm -hmm. place 
um, and um, and uh, well, that... it's rebellious, but it's also it's it's dialectical, right? There's a it's it's based on this sort of like a, a dialogue between between generations and and um, sometimes it's a dialogue, sometimes it's a shouting match, <laughs> and which is a form of dialogue. Sometimes yeah. it is, and sometimes it depends on whether you know you're talking or not. And a lot of times, you know, I'm not talking to you anymore. Get out of my face and all that. Kind of <laughs> run away, you know. And uh, so on. We, we we don't want the young people to run away from us. We want uh, the young generation to run towards us. And 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 therefore, we well, we have uh, taken a decision to refound our youth organization, but also to take several steps that will lead in that direction. You know. So we want to begin with a conversation with our clubs and districts about, you know, how to begin organizing young people, uh, focusing on, you know, issues that affect young people, uh, focusing on particular, you know, universities and college campuses, uh, and so on and so forth. We want to organize special schools. And one of the one of the things that was really exciting, one of the ideas was. Um, a, uh, a sort of summer encampment for youth, like a um, maybe a, a week long or multi week long even uh, school outdoors where you know young people would camp and hang out, but also study and yeah, it's that sounds really exciting. Study and swim and go fishing and yeah. play volleyball and chess and you know whatever yeah. they, you know they they. Uh, you know, want to do, and it would be run by them and for them, and and we would, of course, the party would play a supportive role. So we're really, really excited uh, about yeah. that, uh, going go, going forward. Well, I think that that just about wraps up our time, Scott. Uh, we'll be back next week with another edition of uh, this week. So we want to uh, wish everybody a happy Fourth of July weekend. Uh, we're celebrating our 100th uh, anniversary this year, beginning in September. It's and, uh, and keep an eye on the website because there were a lot of great discussions uh, uh, at the convention and we'll be uh, publishing the um, sort of notes and resolutions and proposals um, uh, around those um, uh, in the next few days. And that website is cpusa.org. And also check us out on Twitter and on our Facebook page, you know, for upcoming events. Uh, one of the most important will be the 100th anniversary celebration that will take place on September 15th. I believe yep. it's the 15th. Uh, we're gonna have regional meetings on the East Coast, Midwest, West, and in the South. And so uh, we'll be, streaming some of those uh, live and so we invite you to uh, check them out to uh, join us to join with us as we continue the fight uh, of our working class and people against exploitation racism sexism homophobia and for a better life uh, for all so and for what uh, how it was uh, for complete and unconditional equality um, that was one of the that was a, a phrase used in one of our Facebook posts recently, and I, it stuck with me. I'm, I'm going to keep uh, keep using that one. You've got the last word, Scott. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs>